we have in the Pasha the amazing encounter of Jacob and Esau, Yaakov and Esau, after 20 years of being separate from each other, Yaakov comes back to Eretz Yisrael and he wants to make peace with his brother. Esau, on the other hand, is still harboring his great resentment and anger against Yaakov and he still wants to kill him. So finally the encounter happens. Yaakov takes the first move by sending angels to Esau. And the hope is that the angels will be peacemakers. Or if not that, they'll at least scare Esau just a little bit. We know from the Midrash that when King, Do when King, when King David, when David Amelech saw an angel, he once saw an angel with a drawn sword. And the fear and the fright that he got from that experience accompanied him. He, had, he lived with that experience for the rest of his life. That fright that he felt at seeing an angel never departed from him. Yet the Midrash, yet the, the, the verse tells us, the Pasha tells us that Esau met the angels and in response he came to war with Yaakov. He came to fight war, a war against Yaakov. He brought with him 400 soldiers. He was planning on a great and gruesome and bloody battle. That's what Esau was planning. The angel did nothing for him. It didn't scare him at all. However, Yaakov then used a second tactic. And this one worked marvelously, magically. He turned Esau from an angry, warring soldier, terrorist. He turned Esau into a happy puppy. What did he do? He played to his two weaknesses. And in truth, it's a weakness that all of us experience. But we have to know that it is a weakness. And when a person is, when a person is touched in the area that he is weakest, that's where he can fall. That's when others can take advantage of him. Yaakov played to Esau's two weaknesses. And what were they? They were, number one, his love of money. Yaakov pandered to that by sending him a very lavish gift. Sheep and goats, camels and cows, a huge gift. A very expensive gift. And this already weakened Esau at the knees. And the second tactic was that when he saw Esau, he bowed down to him a number of times, bowed low before him. He called him my Lord. He called himself your servant. And this is how he pandered him, by giving him prestige, by giving him honor, by showing him his own importance. So this, and he won his heart. He turned Esau with that gift and with that little bit of honor, he turned Esau into a helpless, a, a, a feeble, as one who was incapable of hurting him at all. He turned him into a, a feeble friend. He, he couldn't do anything. He became the loving brother. He, he showered him with hugs and kisses. And that was it. That was the, the, the battle was won. The battle was won with a little bit of bribery, a little bit of money, and a little bit of honor. And we have to realize that that is the weakness of all mankind. And for ourselves, that's our own weakness. And in terms of ourselves, we have to make sure that when others come to bribe us, we shouldn't be swayed. We should know how to recognize the truth and hold on to the truth so that we may reach our ultimate destination and goal and success and, of course, happiness.